everyone, and thank you very much for watching or listening. Liam Hartry here today with another episode of Presenting Champions for the Simply Inspired podcast. And today I am joined by Yako Yusila. I hope I'm saying that the right way now. Uh, an incredible talent in the fighting world, three time kickboxing world champion, veteran of 197 fights, I believe, across kickboxing and boxing as well, competed in multiple styles is also a world-renowned coach, um, travels around the world doing seminars. Combined with his seminars and his competing, has visited at least 75 countries over his life so far and counting. So I'm truly honored to have this man on the show today. And Champ, thank you very much for making time for this. Thank you. It's my honor. If somebody's interested in what I'm doing, though, it's always my honor. Thank you. Well, you're so welcome. It's, it's an honor for us both, I think. Um, so, like I mentioned, obviously, we will talk about your fights, we'll talk about your extensive experience, but you also travel around the world, um, coaching, giving seminars, teaching, and really giving back to um, to the sport. So, at the moment, um, you're actually in El Salvador, uh, recently coming from Guatemala. I believe you've been all over South America. So can you share with us a little bit about this uh, phase, if you like, of, of your travels uh, most recently with some of the uh, the Latin countries that you've been visiting in, in recent months, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we used to travel around five months every year. Um, and because I'm from Finland, cold country from Europe, so I rather go away winter time of course because now my friends are sending messages this minus 15 degrees or something and lots of snow and ice and we have here 40 plus degrees and people are smiling and sun is shining so i cannot complain so uh, now we're on seminar tour we've been traveling with my family i have wife and two children two boys they are four and six years old future champions and they are with me all the time and We've been two months traveling across the Central America. We've already been in Panama, Colombia, uh, Mexico, Belize, Guatemala. Now we are in, Sal in Salvador. Next, we are go heading to Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and back to Panama. Then we come back to Europe to enjoy the summer. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That is amazing. So, yeah. So you're living yeah. the dream, you know, you're living a dream life, you know, um, traveling around, I think it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And as I understand it, you've been traveling like this for for many years now. You've been traveling in, in different phases. I believe when we were talking on Facebook, you said uh, like 20 years or something like that, that you've been traveling around different countries now. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started really early my my career. I started fighting at 70 years old. I was chosen to national team, and uh, and yeah, that I got uh, entered to international games, and I was fighting all around the world from very early start. And I fought over 50 countries on my career, and I got very good con connections and contacts to every continent, to Africa, Asia southern america anywhere in the world so if i if i choose okay this year we go to asia i just give a call for a few friends and let's let's organize some seminars and maybe i come to Myanmar, laos Cambodia, something like that we, we normally choose one direction where we go and then we stay there like a few months mm -hmm. it, it sounds like a dream yeah i, I know it, it's and I feel it so because I can travel with my family. I can do the sport I love. Of course, of course, it's a dream. Yeah. But I'm happy with that. I, I done lots of work because I was training from the early teenage years. I, I spent all my life for this. Absolutely. So this is the best. This is the best reward I can get. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. We are very well deserved um, with the hard work you put in. I also have a, a lot of respect for the fact that you're giving back to to other people, you know, contributing to the lives of, you know, up and coming fighters and people who want to learn and, and develop. It's it's an amazing, um, it's an amazing thing to do, I must say as well. And yes, traveling with your family and everything is it's a win win. 
out of all of the countries that you've been to, so many of them, do you have um, personal favorites or do you just feel that every country has something different to offer, every country has something special, or are there certain ones that stand out to you as being your personal ones you've enjoyed the most visiting, if, if that makes sense? Yeah, I understand what you mean. And many, many times people ask it that, and because we travel so wide, but, but I like the every continent. They have a different style of culture, different style of training methods, different knowledge about nutrition, how you're supposed to train, about the techniques. It's very interesting in total. And, and that's, the, that's the most interesting thing in my, my job because I go so wide. I go every, I meet every culture, every methods, everything mixed. But I cannot say what is my favorite. Of course, if I think, for example, some place I could settle down with my family, I, I would choose something more safe place like Australia or something, not in the middle of Africa where it's a little difficult to get get milk or diapers for the babies and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. It makes sense. I can understand how they all have something different, you know. And when it comes to teaching and, and sort of coaching people and developing um, the next generation of, of fighters, what do you enjoy most about that role, you know, of giving seminars, of passing on your knowledge to people who want to know more about it? Uh, what would you say is, is your favorite part of that aspect of, uh, of your work and what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. of course, I, I get delight from the work I do. When I see the people get development, they, they get inspiration about me, they, they find something new, they, they get some motivation for the training. That, that's the best because I, I many times I visit like orphan homes. I help like, for example, here in El Salvador, I'm going to help uh, young people who are getting out of the gangs, about away from the criminality. They find a new, new way for the life making sports, making something useful. They can develop themselves, they get uh, lots in the heart, lots in the head. So I, I kind of help also people. It, it's part of like charity work also. So it's very important role for me. And, and because they listen to me, they respect me, I get the appreciation. Of course, that's the win-win for me also. So I feel very honored to do this work. Absolutely. It's it's incredible work. I have so much respect for that. You know, when people reach the high level, like you've reached the high level with, you know, world championships and so many amazing things, they're taking the time to to give back to people, they're taking the time to to contribute. Absolutely amazing. So uh and if people want to get in touch with you for a seminar, I know I know you know everyone, as you just said, but just in case when I because when I put this out, it go around the world as well. Anyone wants to get in touch with you, do, should they reach out on social media or your website or what's the best? Yeah, yeah. I have a website. I'm, I'm very easy to reach nowadays because technology technology is totally different than it was 20 years ago. Now it's just just to put a message or call, you find there's no so many crazy coaches in the world. Only Finnish Jarko, Jarko Jussila, yeah, <laughs> the difficult name. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it's a good name and it's, uh, I'm sure people are honoured to work with you, you know, with everything you've achieved. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously you, you're taking um, the opportunities as they come and taking them in all different places. Maybe some people would, would not, but uh, I think it's a wonderful journey that you're on and it's very inspiring for um young fighters as well because it you know you show them that if you put the work in and you put the effort in obviously what they get what they can get out from it like you're traveling around and you're you're living your dream so uh, anyone watching this who's like a up and coming fighter they can learn that lesson as well um so it's it's awesome so talking about your your fights themselves um you know there's so many, you know, we won't be able to talk about them all, obviously. So we, we'll have to talk about some highlights, you know. I'd love to talk about them all, but we'd be here until like the night time or something, a long time, you know. So when it comes to uh, 197, I think you said, you know, kickboxing, boxing, starting at the beginning, for anyone who doesn't know, can you break down like the different styles of kickboxing, the different 
Uh, I believe it's over 40 uh, in boxing. It's over 150 in kickboxing. But just for anybody who doesn't know, because there's so many, can you break down the numbers of roughly how many in each thing, if you get what I mean? What do you mean? I, I like dividing boxing and kickboxing or the styles or? Yeah, boxing, kickboxing, uh, particularly. I mean, I know the answer to this because you you sent it to me. But for anyone who doesn't know, like with the forty plus boxing, hundred and fifty plus kickboxing, and then just how many styles of of kickboxing you've you've tried as well, if that's okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, in kickboxing, there are, there are many many different styles. There are like point fighting in the tatami where they do like it's like a. Like a play, but um, I used to make it ring, ring sports with low kick, K1, and full conduct styles. And in boxing, I, I fought in amateur and professional both. So that that's that's the part. And and what about my my own career? Very interesting story. Also, what is inspiring inspiring people is that I never had a coach. I never had own trainer or coach. That's uh, why I also understand the need of People's need to get inspiration, keep somebody who is pushing them up, giving motivation. Because I self didn't have anyone. I had in the in the early start, of course, I have a trainers. So I went to the basic lessons and things like. But but then all the coaches moved out from my my home city. I live in a very small city in Finland. It's like sixty five thousand people only. And we didn't have club. We didn't have a trainer. We didn't have anything. I was only 19 years old, and I started being head coach of the club. People just gathered there, and I said, "Okay, I have little experience. I can be the trainer there. Let's let's go. I will show you this, and I will learn this. Next year we do it like this." And I was 20 years old, and I already had my own team. I had own all own fighters. I was just a young boy, who didn't know or understand anything yet. But that's that was the start. So I, I started from zero. I can really say I started from zero. We we didn't have anything. We didn't have the knowledge. We didn't have trainer. Nobody to look up to. Wow, that's incredible. I uh, I'm amazed. You know that you, that you've achieved. Um, I mean, I know achieving everything you've achieved. There's a lot of sacrifices, a lot of discipline, and and all of these things. But yeah, training yourself that is uh, that is really something. So when you're coaching these these fighters now you're sort of the role model for them that you never had for yourself in in the yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and the important lesson i try to explain is that in the end you're alone it's very lonely sport in the ring you're always alone okay you you can have a trainer you can have friends you can have support you can have family everything but in the end it's it's only in the heart and in your head you decide what you want. If if you want to achieve something, even the best trainers won't won't help. I unfortunately nowadays I, I many times face like fathers who are saying that I want my boy to be a champion. But then I, okay, what what does your boy want? Does your boy want to be a champion, or is it just you as a dad who wants your boy to be a champion? So you cannot do it. Even the best trainer cannot help people to achieve something if they really don't want it's it's all about in your heart and in your head after all absolutely yeah yeah you, you either have it or, or you don't you have the desire it makes sense it makes a lot of sense so this question it's a pretty big question because of the amount of, of fights you had but do you have um favorite moments or like your proudest moments of your career i mean obviously you've won world titles you've fought all over the world you've done some amazing things um in your life in terms of specifically focusing on the fights and, and the competitions but do you have personal uh favorite moments or proudest moments out of the 197 fights amazing number um do you have favorites from from those uh, yeah, that, that's a very big, big question, like you said. But, but actually, I could say one, one of the proudest moments was after the last fight I had. I had in, in Sydney, Australia. It was the third world title fight. I won it. 
unanimous decision after 12 rounds. And I went to the hotel room with the belt and I, I threw the belt in my bed and looked out of the window. It was like very nice room I had in a hotel. The floor was like something like 26 or something. And I saw, saw all the Sydney from the window. And at the, that and that moment, I knew, okay, I'm done. This, this was the last fight. I'm not going to fight anymore. And all my life, I had the passion to fight, fight, fight. Every week, almost, I had to fight. I traveled from Finland to Asia, to Africa, to Southern America, to Brazil, everywhere. Fight, 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 all my life. But after the, this last fight with third world title, the, the decision was so clear. I knew it at that moment. I knew, okay, no more, no more. This is it. I'm 36 years old when I finished, when I retired eight years ago. And I, I knew, I knew, okay, there, there's young lions behind me. There's thousands of people who are getting after me because now I'm three-time world champion. Everybody wants to beat me. So better just stop it at the top. You understand what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I was very proud of that that moment that the, the decision was so clear. And as you know, many top athletes in ring sports, combat sports, they always want to, okay, maybe I take a couple fights more and then they get punched or they lose or some, something bad happens. Nobody's invincible in the end. Of course, we have like Floyd Mayweather and something who made it like good decisions and stop stop when they was unbeatable. But but I was very proud of that decision because it was it has been all my life. It's very difficult decision for, for many fighters. And when is the last day? When is the last fight? But I was so proud. I, I didn't injure myself. I, from the face I look like teenage boy. I'm now 44 years old. I have noses straight, ears high on the place. I can speak. I, I'm happy. I'm happy. And I can continue the sport. There's, uh, people uh, respect me more when I'm three-time world champion, not the, the ex-champion who, who got beaten up a few times, but I, I finished at the top. So it's lots of, you understand? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's the way to do it, man. You know, um, achieve the dream and get out of there with with everything intact you know with the, the as you say be mentally sharp and physically good health and everything and you have that so uh, i'm happy for you because it, that is the way um because you know working around fighters you know you do see those guys who you know they, they keep coming back you know they retire for a little while and then maybe they think oh i'm gonna have another one i, I think i've still got it and eventually you know it, it it doesn't end well so the fact you've gone out on top fantastic you know wonderful um with becoming world champion as well um people can watch the fights obviously and, and see what happened but in your own mind how does it actually feel you know when you like maybe when you won the first one or maybe it's it's the same for all three of them but in a moment like that when you when you know that you've won what actually goes through your mind and and what do you feel in your emotions and, and everything you know yeah, 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 I understand what you mean. And and uh, at some point, I didn't care about losing or winning because I, I didn't like the pressure and the stress which was coming. Everybody was expecting me to win or or something like that. But I, I stopped caring about that. I was only concentrating on of myself. I just wanted to develop and make it better and better and better. So many times what people didn't understand that even if I won, I could be a little bit little sad because I didn't manage to make things I, I was I have been training and things like that. Or if I if I lose very tight might, I, I can be feel like a winner because I understand okay it was heavier opponent. I was a little injured or something. There was something on back. But still I was glad. So I I never met, I never said that I want to be a world champion or anything. Never, 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 never. That wasn't the dream or the goal I was chasing. It was only to develop and uh, enjoy the sport. I, I always wanted to just have more and more fights. And people said, okay, now you won first world championship title. Let's let's go and party. I said, no, I, I have to go to training. I'm so bad that I have to train more because I know my next opponent is training at the moment that he wants to beat me. <laughs> so, so 
it was good motivation. I, I never never thought that, okay, now I'm ready or now I'm good. Now I'm world champion. Now I can have the belt with me all the time. No, no, no. I just threw it in, in, in my closet and keep on training and developing myself. It wasn't the goal I was chasing some title or something. Of course, it's nice to get some belts and titles and appreciation, of course. And for sponsors and things like that, you need need to achieve something. But that wasn't the the main goal, you understand? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it was more for me. It was more for me. That That's why I like to share my knowledge and things nowadays too. I do it as a charity basic. Of course, when I travel, I need some money. I, I get money from seminars of training classes, but many times I do it for charity. If I know, for example, these young people who are getting out of the gangs, criminal people, I help them for free. I know they don't have money, but if I can support and help them some way, I will do it. Yeah, absolutely. That's a beautiful thing, really, you know, to be doing, to helping people change their, their path, as I said earlier. But um, I get where you're coming from with wanting to develop and enjoying the process because it's not it's not a question, but you just find this interesting. Um, when I when I do these interviews, I found that the people who won the most world titles, you know, people who've won, you know, three, four, five, six, the people who've done that, they actually not they're the same as you. They're not focusing on or oh, you know I want to win that. I must get that thing. They're just focusing on, you know, um, to, today I'm going to be a bit better in training than I was yesterday and tomorrow I'll be a bit better than I was today. And it's like a like a pattern, you know, with the people who won the most, they, they weren't concentrating on that. They were just concentrating on enjoying, improving, you know, and I, I find that fascinating, you know. It's not a question, but you just thought you find it interesting. You know, you know that. So, okay, amazing. So, as well as this, people always want to hear about um, about toughest fights. You know, this is something that is is a very popular question that I, I get asked to ask. If you get what I mean. But the thing about toughest fights is obviously it, it comes in different forms because you people hear that and they think, oh, you know, that's like the power of somebody. But obviously, it can be technical. It can be um, a lot of times I ask this question, people say it's something going on outside of the ring, something going on in their life. They have to focus through that to win. Mm -hmm. But for you, what what would you say your toughest challenges have been uh, made? You know, I'm sure there's a lot. So I'm sorry, it's a big question again. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, I get it. Get, get, uh, I would say the the most difficult fight was... Uh, it's actually a little bit tragic and, and sad thing, but but uh, my little brother was my best supporter, my closest friend, but he died in a car accident we, when he was 18 years old. Well, sorry for your loss. Yeah, that's terrible. If he passed away, it's all already like how many years? I don't even count. Like 20 years ago, 20 years ago. But he passed away, and the next day, I had a fight. I had booked fight for the next day, and so my brother died on Saturday, and I had fight on Sunday. And uh, when I heard the news that my brother passed away, I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't talk to trainer. I didn't talk to my friends. I decided I, that I'm going to that fight. I do the best I can. And it's, it's hell upstairs to my brother. And I went to the fight. I, I won a technical knockout in third round. I was like a beast in the ring after all. Sorry for my opponent. Yes, <laughs> no harm. But, but I did good. And that was one, one change in my life. I decided that because life can end any time. Any day can be the last day. I decided I'm going to, going to kill give everything for this sport, which I enjoy, which was like common thing for me and my brother. So it was one, one turn in the life. There's many, many turns and, and points in the life which can affect the direction you are going. But this was one of the main. And because I had the fight next day, I think that was mentally challenging, very difficult fight for me. But yeah. I succeeded. 
and I turn it the, the sadness to powers and encourage myself. Absolutely, yeah. Well, first of all, uh, I'm sorry for your loss because you know to lose someone like that is is a terrible situation. Mm. At the same time, the fact that you've taken those emotions, you know, you've used it for something good, uh, is incredible, incredible thing. Thank you for sharing that because um, yeah. it's quite a personal thing, you know. So I, I appreciate you sharing it. Actually, um, okay. no, but no, but I, I can continue still. What you were asking. There's many, many times there's something background back on the fighter's mind, which you don't understand. The people who are just watching the fight, they say, ah, he, he didn't do so good. He was bad. He was, you never should say something about fighters that at blame and ah, you didn't do good because you don't understand anything about their life. They can be some, they have lost their family yesterday and you, you just, accusing that oh you know you you wasn't sharp and you understand there's many things behind the fighters so you should always respect fighters who get in the ring and put put their life on on the line yeah you should absolutely everyone who gets in there they they deserve that respect i agree i agree so you with this we've touched on something interesting because it's something else that people don't see is the mental side of of combat, you know, the mental side of sports, because training hard and the discipline, the physical discipline is, is important. You have to have, obviously, a strong mind as well, as you know all too well from what we've been saying. So outside of, of that situation with your brother, just when it comes to generally preparing for fights, say like, you, you know, you were fighting every week and everything, what is your mental process? What's going through your mind on the build-up to a big fight or to any fight, really? I mean, are you one of those people who's like visualizing the fight and thinking through it? Or are you putting it more out of your mind? I'm just curious to get into what your process yeah. was for that. Mm, yeah, that's a very interesting question also. And, and uh, my way was uh, do the training so hard that the fight would be easy, you understand? So I was uh, mentally preparing myself by doing so hard training, so I gave 101% in the training. So I, when I, when I got in the ring, I, I was sure that I've done enough. I was, I have been training so hard and so passionate that I was sure that the opponent sure haven't done that. And I, I saw opponent's eyes that okay, he's a little bit unsure about himself or something like that. It's lots of men mental fighting also in the ring so mm -hmm. I, I prepared my mind that i i was sure every time i was in in so so good shape trained so hard that whatever comes if i if i lose the fight okay then i haven't then i have to do more next time i i wasn't afraid of losing or not concentrating only on the winning i was just making myself sure like like self self-confident I'm the best. Even if it if it wasn't true, but I had to make myself believe that I am the best at the moment I get in the ring. If I'm little, uh, maybe I didn't do enough. Maybe I should run a little more every morning or something like that. I, I feel insecure and then I can can get can lo lose the fight. But I should be always prepared for the fight and believe in yourself. Even if nobody else believes you, but you have to believe in yourself. Absolutely, yeah. That's very good advice. Very, very good advice for life, you know. Obviously, that applies to sports and to combat, but you can take that lesson and people can apply that to anything that they, they want to yeah. succeed, you know. So Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's a big part of why I do these as well, you know, is it's not just to fight stuff with these interviews, but to get a few lessons, you know, from people who have achieved great things like you've achieved great things and um to share those with people who who need it you know it's uh, so I, I appreciate you appreciate you sharing that um very very much while you were competing did you ever have um obviously you competed in 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 boxing and kickboxing and different styles of kickboxing did you ever have a preference for which style of competition or were you just happy to 
sort of try a bit of everything and and compete across different uh, the different styles and and between boxing and kickboxing. Did you prefer one over the other, or were they sort of equal in your mind? It was quite equal. It there's always rules to follow. And of course, I tried to prepare with those rules. I know that knew the next fight is coming. So if I had a boxing fight, I, I had a stance a little lower and a little more with the hand techniques and moving and in kickboxing, maybe a little higher using the legs and combinations, as of course, like that. But uh, in overall, I just enjoyed the fighting. I, I enjoyed the, the feeling and the spirit. I enjoyed it from the start to the end everything from the middle it was it was my passion i just wanted more and more i was always hungry for more and i that's why i got 200 fights because it was very difficult from finland from my country i all, almost every time i had to travel abroad to have a fight we didn't have so much in finland okay of course some fights but at some point when i was uh how would i say i was good enough there was no opponent for me in my home country, so I always have to travel very far to have a fight. Yeah. But I just wanted more and more. Many times when I had to fight, I already knew when I have the next fight. Because now, now, nowadays, many professional fighters, they can have like two, maximum three fights per year. And one of the busiest year I had was 32 fights in one year. And almost every fight was abroad. It was all over the world, so you can you can imagine how much traveling it was and turning the time zones. Okay, now we're in Asian time, African time. It was crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but afterwards I'm laughing. But then when I was cutting cutting weight, I, w I was fighting in three different weight categories, from 62 to 66 kilos, and everything between. Uh, I have a long reach. I'm quite big, big, big guy in my category. So. I had lot lots to do with capping weight and very disciplined life all, all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I mean, 32 in, in one year, that is that yeah. something you don't hear that uh, these days, you know. So uh, no. it was great. Yeah. And just that, of course, there were some tournaments, but everywhere in the world, I had all the continents, I had the fights, and it's it was crazy. Yeah, absolutely. So you also mentioned there as well about, uh, you know, the places you've traveled and everything. But I meant to ask this earlier, you know, but but I forgot because there are so many amazing stories. Representing your country, you know, representing Finland on the world stage, you know, around the world and um, traveling to all these places from your country. What does it, it mean to you? To, to represent because I know you said earlier that you were doing the, the sports to test yourself and you you know you were not really focused on some of these external things. But I still imagine that you know representing your country on the world stage was was special to you. Yeah it was it was I always think that people should have roots. You have should have like home every time even if I travel now a lot I always mention I'm from Finland this is our home this kind of country we have a nice nature we have good education things like that i i think everybody should have a place what they call home even if they travel a lot i was really proud presenting my country it's a small country and world level many people in somewhere they don't even never heard about finland okay where is that okay north europe okay uh, next to russia things like that okay but i, I was proud i was proud about that yeah, and so you should be, you know, because representing your country is a very, very special uh, thing to to be doing. Um, so moving into the last couple of things, you know, for for this talk, you know, because I keep the, these interviews maybe forty five minutes, an hour, something like that, because people's attention, you know, they can they can watch it for that time, but they, you know, if it's too long, they won't. Yeah. Moving into the last couple of things, and and also you've got things to do. You've got your whole day ahead of you so uh, i i understand that okay. but i obviously talking about the future because earlier on you mentioned about some of the countries you're going to you know nicaragua and these various places that that are coming up honduras so that mm -hmm. is this trip 
but uh, in terms of like your future plans you know maybe for the next couple of years or something is it the same thing is it to continue to travel and continue to teaching people just to get into what's motivating you now and and what's driving you so much we've sort of talked about this a little bit with the charity work and, and everything so I guess you obviously you're continuing that any other things that are that are driving you now for your next steps mm, yeah yeah I, I just want to I want to visit new new places new countries I, I want to expand the 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 globe and and of course the fighters are like family around the world everywhere I go every country I visit they say in the end that this is your home now. You're always welcome here. We we wait you back. And I, I feel sorry to, to say that there's 200 countries in the world. I cannot come back to every place. I just come come for visit. When when we see next time, they are asking, are you coming next year here? I said, okay, I have 100 countries in, in the line, which I should visit. So I, I'm not sure, maybe not next year. It might be 10 years. Last time I was here in El Salvador was actually 12 years ago. So it can be like a small gap in the visits. But, but of course, uh, uh, when, when I'm like appreciated fighter, I, I have homes everywhere. I'm welcomed everywhere. They are putting red carpet, bringing flowers and treating me like a king in some countries and it's it's nice it's very nice i'm i'm very humble guy i'm very humble believe it or not i i never start converse, conversation that hello i'm a world champion come on open the doors i'm here no i just tell the people that ah, maybe i could share some knowledge i have some information i could give you something if you give me something back i'm very thankful that that that's how it goes and one 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 inspirational lesson also is that uh, in the start when when i told you i started from zero i had nothing i wasn't talent i wasn't strong i wasn't fast i didn't have anything that would make me think that i'm better than anybody else i always think even nowadays nowadays i today i'm thinking that ah, i'm not so good i have to develop more i'm i'm like always be a student also that makes me humble too i never think that okay i'm world champion I i'm gonna show you how it goes this is the way there's no other ways no 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 i, I hate that in combat sports many times they have two big egos in, in the gym they have one coach one king who they are obeying okay if you go and visit the other gym okay bye bye you never welcome here anymore come on what's that that's not sport Sport should be fun. Sport should be open. You should everybody help each other and things like that. It's like community, fighter family, which I used to say. But but that's one reason I kept myself as a freelancer because I I, I got used to it. When I was fighter, I didn't have a trainer, I didn't have a manager, I didn't have a team. It was only me. I was like freelancer. They can call me from Africa, Yarko. Can you come to Uganda and fight against our hero? I said, okay, I take my backpack and I come along. They, when I arrived there to Kampala in the middle of jungle and there's 50,000 people out outdoor stadium looking to fight and they asked, where's your trainer? I said, no, I don't have a trainer. I just came here to beat your hero. <laughs> and it, it, it was crazy times, but I enjoyed, I got so much more. I get the connections to everything. I have friends all over the world. I have a good network, and and after all the the uh, circumstances or the gyms, everybody knows each other somehow. There's good connections. Everybody helping me at some points. For example, now I'm visiting countries I've never been before. We go next week. We go to Honduras. I never I've never been there before, but I got good net, good connections when I was in Panama. Now I'm organizing seminar there. I'm going to MMA event, which I'm going to be VIP guest and some judge judging. It's very nice. I get new friends and probably after my visit, they say, this is your new home again. Welcome whenever you want. <laughs> it's, it's great. It's great. <laughs> I already forgot your question. <laughs> oh, you, you answered the question and, and then you and then 
many more you know much more as well so no it's, it's wonderful uh, absolutely wonderful um journey that you that you are on and um i i appreciate you you sharing all of that um the last thing to to give a, a mention to um anybody watching around the world who uh wants to compete you know they want to they have a big dream um to to do something obviously people want to learn from you they should come to your seminars when you're in their country because i'm sure you'll be at whatever country they're in at some point but if you had to share like maybe one or two final um pieces of advice for people who want to achieve their dream who are watching this somewhere um we throughout this call we've shared several um really really good lessons so just to close out with um anything else you would say to people around the world who want to be the best version of themselves and want to achieve their dreams please yeah just just concentrate on working hard not nothing comes too easy you really have to have the passion you really have to work hard uh before my first fight i was training like half professionally two and a half years nowadays many people come to the gym and they say can I go to fight after one month training? I said, okay, may maybe a little more. Train at least one year before you go to fight. So you get much more better experience when you, you, you cannot learn it so fast. It's, it should be more than more like lifestyle, not just like going some course, get the ex ex this experience. It should be more than lifestyle. You, you have to take it into your life. Feeling good, eating healthy. Be a good person. That's a good advice for everybody. Absolutely, yeah. Well, you know, I I'm a big believer in that. What you put out into the world is is what you get back in the end. You know, and uh, very true. Yeah, very very important. So, we've talked about some uh, some good things today. You know, and I know that with this, we've we've sort of only scratched the surface because there's so many adventures and there's so many places you've been. But nonetheless, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your morning. And um, I just want to, to thank you for um, sharing everything you've shared and being so open to, to share all of that. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Leon. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon.